So we have our cream ready. We have our client who is happily snoring on the table. After whatever modality we choose to practice, but this is going to be our 30 minute kind of summary of the routine, which is in all of your packets. So first things first, we're going to start with our two points. So we have our solar plexus. And here we have that just below the ball of the foot in line with the third tone. We're gonna to hold that for about 30 seconds. And if you'd like to encourage the client to take a deep breath, I don't right cue. Such a good client. <laughs> okay, and then we'll move to the adrenal. So we take our thumbs and we palpate along that inner edge of the foot until we hit that proximal head of the first metatarsal and then slide in, in between that first and second toe. seconds, just showing this is kind of the boring part of reflexology is just like 15, 16, 17, 18. But again, the count is just to keep you from spending 20 minutes here uh, and making sure that you're just using it as a check-in, you're just using it as a kind of first touch from that perspective. And then we'll go to our hot towels if you wanted to give me those. They have been baking all morning, so please be careful. Yep. And then I'll get to that is not that is not hot at all. Why is it all but not hot? Why no hot hot towel? Mm -hmm. No? Mm -hmm. Oh well. So no hot towels. <laughs> Cold towels. Cold towels. Okay. So we'll jump right into our technique. So we have our six relaxation techniques. First, we're gonna do Sloppy Susan, so hands on either side of the ball of the foot, fingers nice and loose, nice waggle back and forth. And down to our military train, suction cupping the palms of the hands onto those malleable lines. Okay. Push pull. Outside hand makes a fist. Inside hand comes just below that bunion area. We are leaning in and pulling back. Leaning in and pulling back. Leaning in and pulling back. And after a few pumps, like as an example, we have some big feet on the table, right? So it may take a couple extra to feel like those metatarsals are loosened. And then we're just going to take that fist and drop it down a little bit. You could even think of it as a chest, lung, shoulder, upper digestive, lower digestive, if you wanted to think of it as like going through those three places. Or you could get a little creative with it. but we're just making sure that everything's moving correctly, that nothing feels like it's sticking or glitching. Okay. Then we have our heel rotation, so we have a nice grip with that outside hand, apply a little bit of gloss, and then our thumbs up hand, flat fist to push and twist. Finally, we have our knuckle roll, supporting the foot on the outside, and then rocking those knuckles in. Reset. Okay. First area that we're going to walk is going to be the spine. Yeah? The spine is located all along this inside arch. So we have the neck, then we have thoracic, and then we have lumbar, and then we have sacroiliac. 
Great. So we're going to, first and foremost, place the thumb at the lower back reflexes. And we're going to use that thumb walk to just inch along those spinal reflexes. Once your thumb cannot reach anymore, shift your leverage. And continue that walk all the way up to just below that bunion area. Not nice, this space. So we're not going to walk over that bone, that interphalangeal joint, metatarsophalangeal joint. And we'll do this three times. Why? Because if we did it four times, you would spontaneously combust. <laughs> <laughs> After we walk the spine three times, then we're going to move to the toes. Starting with the fifth digit, we're going to do a little bit of a massage walk combination. Two fingers on the top, thumb on the bottom, and we're going to do a nice kind of squeeze pull rotate in order to walk the thumb up the toe. We're going to do that three times. And as we're going all work on you and give you that kind of tactile sensation of what we're doing as well. And we move to the fourth time. Same thing, three times. In my books, we talk about some advanced theory where each toe corresponds to a different zone of the body. So when somebody has problems with one particular toe, that also means that they have blockage or congestion or some sort of um, issue in that corresponding zone. So just kind of additional theory, theory on top of theory. But again, this is the boring point, like each toe just three times. And we're gonna, we're gonna break protocol a little bit because there's some tension right here. So what I would normally do if a client comes in and there's a, a spot that needs to be held a little bit, we would pause the routine and we would address that point or that area specifically. So here I'm just holding the toe with one hand and then using my fingers on the dorsal surface to kind of place and hold on that point, which corresponds to the neck. And we wait for that tissue to release. And then we just continue as if nothing happened. And move to the second toe three times. This one's even worse, great. All the neck things. Then we go to the big toe. Now the big toe is big, right? Um, and because it is big, uh, and it is also the area that represents the head directly, we want to use some of our technique to walk this area specifically. So this is where we get a little bit, uh, a little bit kind of minutia oriented, where we're going to split the toe up into its various reflexes. So here we have C1 through C7, according to reflexology. So at the, if we bend the toe, right at that interphalangeal space, all the way to the metatarsophalangeal joint, that's going to be kind of direct spine reflex. So we're going to walk that area kind of from seven to one, three times. Three, okay. And then we are going to walk up the plantar surface of the proximal phalanx five times. So just a natural progression from that singular line across the bottom. And we'll go over all of this many times. And then we continue to the pad of the toe, doing that same thing, walking up. You can see nice color change to indicate circulation.
And then the last part, we walked the medial side, now we have to walk the lateral side. But going like this is really difficult, so instead we're going to use our fingers and we're going to walk down the outside three times. Kind of like the motion that you use to turn a screwdriver. Yep. And that's going to be all of the SCM, that's going to be all of the uh, scalenes, that's going to be all the lateral aspects of the neck. Okay? And that's about as complicated as we're going to get for the big toe. Then we go back to our normal walk and we're going to go to the ball of the foot. So we just got done with the toe, so we're going to shift down and we're going to go back to thumb walking. And we're going to walk from the base of the big toe to the or the base of the ball of the foot to the top of the ball of the foot. Just to kind of move my hands out of the way, just to show you. Three times in line with each toe. And this will give us a nice thorough walk over the surface. Three. Okay. Now with my hands in the way, it looks more like this. The top hand is supporting and almost pulling the texture, uh, the tissues of the foot into my walk. Because in body work, you know, you never want just one hand flapping out here in the wind. You always want it to be that kind of two-handed practice. I forget where I was, so I just do it again, because I'm talking. Okay, then we move in line with the third toe, same thing, walking from the base of that ball of the foot all the way to the top. And then in line with the fourth toe. And for those of you who want to get super specific, notice how my thumb is keeping that bend, but this is not bending. Staying strong at that proximal joint. One, two, and three for our last. For our last walk. I always like to end this area with a little bit of a shake. Just a little bit of a, a loosey goosey shake it up. That's optional. That's the last risk. And we're going to take a little bit more cream and we're going to gloss the digestive reflexes. So, like we said before, the digestive reflexes are found on the plantar surface of the foot in between the ball of the foot and the calcaneus. How we separate upper from lower digestive reflexes is going to be the proximal or the uh, yeah the proximal head of the fifth metatarsal, so that bone on the outside of the foot. We draw that line across, and we have our upper digestive and lower digestive. Here's where we start to walk and chew gum at the same time. We're going to start with our outside hand, and we're going to horizontally walk from the fifth toe to the third toe three times. Why do we stop at the third toe? We stop at the third toe because that's when the plantar tendon starts to get very, very prominent. And walking horizontally over the plantar tendon is no bueno. No bueno. Yep. And then we are going to take our thumb and move a thumb's width down and do the same thing. Walking from the fifth toe to the third toe three times. Still in the upper digestive area. And this is all written out on your manual. Then last but not least, thumbs width down and we should be right at that proximal head of the fifth metatarsal. Depending on the size of your thumb. Three. Another reason why we walk this area horizontally before we walk all of it vertically is because this area is very thick. Yeah. This is where a lot of our weight goes, so there's going to be a lot of tension through here. There's going to be a lot of congestion through here. So we want to walk it twice. After we finish that last horizontal walk, we're going to switch hands, and we're going to start at that proximal head of the fifth metatarsal, and we're going to walk vertically in line with each toe, three times, kind of backwards from what we did at the ball of the foot. 
So here's number two. And number three in line with the fifth toe. And then we go in line with the fourth toe. One, two, and three. Then in line with the third toe, again, starting in line with that proximal head of the fifth. And part of the reason why we do that is to just help you delineate this is upper versus lower. So that as you're walking and as you get better at assessing texture, your job gets easier because you've separated the technique into upper and lower. So you don't have to question where exactly, where, where am I right now? And then as you memorize the map, you'll start to remember more frequently liver, gallbladder on the right, spleen, stomach, and most of pancreas on the left, and it'll become easier. But it starts with differentiating this technique. Two and three. Now we're going to take that same format, three horizontal from five to three, and then five vertical in line with each toe, and do the same thing on the lower digestive. Yeah? So, a little bit of leverage, and we're going to start at that proximal head of the fifth metatarsal, and we're going to do our three rows horizontally, from the fifth toe to the third toe. So there's one, two, and three. Shift the thumbs with down, one, thumbs width down. And by that third thumbs width, you're right at the calcaneal surface. Yeah, right at the, what we'd call the end of the zone. So it really does help you distinguish between, okay, we're now, we're now leaving this area and moving into that area. Then we'll switch hands and then start walking vertically in line with each toe, but just in that lower digestive area three times. As we walk, we are gripping the tissue, so it is that alternating pressure. But the reason why we use a little bit of a gloss, a little bit of a cream, a little bit of a lubricant, is to make sure that the skin isn't pulling as we drag. Yeah? So we want the ability to grip the tissues. We don't want to slip and slide all over the place, but we don't want it so dry that we're pulling skin unnecessarily. So in line with the third toe, one, two, and three. In line with the second toe, your routine. So let's wrap up with the relaxation techniques. rotation.
See that nice color change happening on the heel as well. Lots of good circulation. And then knuckle roll. And then if we want to be nice and kind, we can wrap his little foot up a little bit. <laughs> Normally in a full session, we would have the client's foot wrapped in fleece, which is also used more in the hot towel aspect to keep heat in. and push and twist on the heel. And knuckle roll. Okay, so what's the first area we walk? So we just finished doing the knuckle roll on this one. And so now, if it needs a little bit of a extra gloss, you can. Some people have really dry feet. Um, likewise, if somebody has hyperhidrosis, you know, something to keep in mind, but you don't necessarily need all of that lubricant and cream because they're already, they already have like a slick film all over the tissues. Okay. Once you're done literally kicking just shift your leverage. Easy. The, uh, again, the one thing that you should be aware of as you're doing this technique is making sure that you are comfortable and that your client is comfortable. If something feels like it's too much, even if you're barely pressing, back off. Yeah. But likewise, if something feels odd to you, and for some reason the hand positioning just doesn't really feel right to you, change it, play with it, adjust your, adjust your height, adjust your body mechanics, adjust where you're sitting, how high you are, how ill you are, really make sure that these techniques cause you no pain, and that will really make sure that you're as sustainable as possible. Then we're moving on to each toe, so we've got those two fingers, up top, thumb on the bottom, and we're doing a nice semi-rotation pull walk on each toe. Just as if we were holding someone's head on a massage table and just gently guiding them through various ranges of motion to kind of adjust and almost like traction the toes away from that neck compression. Had, uh, I have several therapists in, in some of my classes, and at this point, they're very tempted to pop the toes. It's like, you can do that on your own time? Not in this class. <laughs> very aggressive. We do not do aggressive in this class. Yeah, and again, the toes very locked. So falling down a falling down a, a rabbit hole, you can just la 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 if you want to, but 
when you see the third toe slopped on both feet. So that third toe is vertical zone three associated with the stomach and the liver. So it would be digestive induced neck tension. When you see this a lot in traditional Chinese medicine, the liver and the stomach uh, as coordinating the either relaxation or tension of tissues. So that's something that we would then discuss with the client. Okay, so big toe, we're gonna massage the big toe three times and then we're gonna zoom into those specific sections and walk them individually. Which starts with that medial surface, the proximal hallux phalanx. One, two, three. And then we're gonna go underneath and walk vertically about five times to cover that whole plantar surface of the proximal phalanx. And then we go to the pad of the toe and do the same thing walking vertically. About five vertical passes. And we can really see that flash of, of color. But what I'm really doing here is, although I'm walking with my dominant hand, my other hand is really bracing the toe to make sure that it doesn't deviate. Because uh, the toe is very, very sensitive. All the toes are, but the big toe especially. If you've ever jammed it into something, you know this. Um, so we really want to make sure that it stays as aligned as possible while we apply the directional force to it. So that both, you know, the toe stays integrity, alignment, focus, but also that the client doesn't feel, what are they doing? And their nervous system starts to feel uncomfortable by the technique. So we hit the medial surface, underbelly, and big toe pad, then we're going to reach over the top to hit that lateral surface, and we're going to walk down three times. One. Two and three. Just curling the fingers into that lateral side of the toe. Okay, and that's all for the toes. Then we're going to take a little bit of cream and we're going to gloss the uh, ball of the foot. And then we're going to do the easy part. Ball of the foot is really easy to work in general. It's really patty, it's really squishy in most people, not always. Um, Elderly will lose padding here. Um, also, people who uh, put a lot of pressure on this area, if you see a lot of dancers, if you see um, a lot of people who struggle with things like Morton's aroma will have a lack of padding here. Or if they have excessive padding, it's normally inflammation due to the injury and or like severe callousing. Two, three, so just walking in line with each toe three times. As the technique continues, like especially as you're on the second foot, you might notice your hands starting to get a little bit tired. There's a really big difference between my hands hurt because I'm doing it wrong, like I'm out of alignment, I'm overextending my thumb, I'm pressing too hard, my leverage is not correct, versus, wow, I normally don't use my hands like this. Okay? So just be aware of the difference between those two things. Because I remember, like, as a massage therapist, you have a certain amount of strength in your hands, but even then, just working on such a small space with such specific techniques, it's a workout. Um, develop your little thumb biceps. 
Um, but at the same time, you know, just recognizing that line between, wow, this is a great workout, and I think I pulled something. So we're going to start our upper digestive reflexes. Again, that horizontal walk first. And that's going to be from the fifth toe to the third toe three times. Three, and then last thumbs with down. One. Three. Switch hands, and then we walk up in line with each toe three times. In line with the fourth toe now. Um, for you, it's a mix of uh, kind of points where on the other side, there was pretty good tissue consistency. On this side, it's like, whoop, I'm falling into the tissue. There's a, there's a lack. Um, Still, like on a scale of one to ten, not really bad, but I am noticing a point in horizontal zone three, and we had vertical zone three in the big toe, uh, pretty active. So that's kind of uh, a double, a double hit, a double kind of marker significance. proximal head of the fifth metatarsal. Start our horizontal walk again. Three times. Switch hands, go vertical. So essentially, you're only having to learn one foot, and then you just do the same thing on the other one. In line with the second toe. And now that all of you have seen this demonstrated in real time and that you've memorized it perfectly, um, you will not need me to walk you through uh, the routine at all. So you will, you will have uh, free time uh, for the rest of the which is what a bad teacher would say. Um, and we are going to walk through everything step by step, start to finish, multiple times. Um, a routine's purpose is to give you structure. If you deviate from that structure, you are not wrong. You've just deviated from a routine. Hop back on the train. I just want to make sure that you don't get lost, right? And the routine is here to make sure that you don't skip an area. So as long as you have like in your packets, as long as you have a guideline, as long as you have a checklist, as long as you have something to refer back 
tattoo to make sure that you don't unintentionally not touch an area, um, that's what's important. But at the same time, here's a funny story. story. Uh, I had a client who came in to see me and uh, they wanted to give a session to their mother as a gift and their mother uh, did not speak English. And so uh, essentially they basically just dropped their mother off on my doorstep and said, here you go. Uh, I did not know this, was not prepared for this and there was no communication uh, available during the session, which was very, very unfortunate. And the next week, my client came back after briskly picking up their, their mother and um, said, you did such a great job handling my mother's knee pain. And I immediately flashed back to the session and I was like, I didn't work her knee reflex. I totally forgot about her knee reflex. Oh my God. But even though I did not directly manipulate the reflex associated with that pain, this session was still effective. So we need to be aware of like, again, those feedback loops that we're creating in the body through this modality with that on and off pressure. As a nervous system modality, the body starts to relax muscles that are associated with various points of pain that may not be in the point of some people. So it's not like you need to, again, jam a particular reflex a million times in order to be successful, but the routine is here to make sure that you don't miss the knee reflex, you know, that type of stuff. Okay. After we do the relaxation techniques, we would, in theory, use hot towels. Machine, you have betrayed me. Um, but we will end it instead with our solar plexus and adrenal. So finding that solar plexus point in line with the third toe, just below the ball of the foot. Holding for about 30 seconds. It always, what? It's warm? Oh, you pressed the button? I did. Oh, thank you. Yes. Is there, are there two? Yes, okay. Oh, amazing. No, it was definitely closed. All right. So this is how we would wrap a, uh, a hot towel. And there's a whole video on hot towels on, on the YouTubes. It's just a nice way to, to end the session, to begin and end the session, but also to take off like stuff so that plants don't slip and slide all over the... Which, which is a very real concern. Uh, we, we do live in Florida, which has a high high elderly population uh -huh. and so that needs to be needs to be taken into account. Um, and then there you go. Another reason from my PTOT kind of background is the hot towels provide a really nice contrast between warm and cold because they start off warm and then they gradually lose temperature. They also provide contrast between wet and dry uh, and smooth and rough. So they're stimulating multiple types of sensory nerves in the tissue, uh, which is another kind of way to wash that, uh, that area of stimulus. Also, there was one time when a client came in and they used, I put hot towels on them and they were like, why do those towels feel so cold? And they were literally steaming. And so we had a conversation about adjusting their medication. That was a, that was a thing. So we did the solar plexus, we'll finish with the adrenal. You're also looking to train the body with this routine and train the, the nervous system with these points. So when a client comes in 
and the body knows what to expect. I'll often have clients that are here in the room for the first foot. And then by the time we get to the second foot and the body starts to recognize that pattern and realizes that there's no deviation and that they don't have to worry about sensing what's coming mm -hmm. next. They've already felt it before. Gone. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Just completely sawing logs at that point. Um, and likewise with every session. So the, the body will be able to relax deeper each time as it is like, oh, I've, I've done this before. I, I know this. I know this routine. I know this road. It is safe. Cool. And that is our demo of the half hour routine. And I believe our, our model survived. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Tim. Just hit end and we are all good.